Topping the news at 7, Antigua's Five Islands UE campus to be at the forefront of a major push on the blue economy. Will there be any new taxes in this year's budget? Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown responds. Nod's director responds to rumors that an explosive eruption of La Soufrière volcano would cause a tsunami in Antigua. And Sir Hilary Beckles speaks with ABS News a day after getting a prestigious Martin Luther King Jr. Global Award. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, the region's news leader. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Andy Lybert. We begin our newscast of this way this evening. And Tegan Barbute is at the forefront of efforts to develop the blue economy. That's right, Andy, because a memorandum of our understanding, MOU, was signed today, which will place the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus at the center of that thrust in this country and indeed across the region. ABS's Jessica Russell has details on this very crucial development today. Prime Minister has signed and Sir Hilary has signed. Thank you. If, uh, if we were in a room, you would now hear loud applause. Yeah. The Government of Antigua and the Barbuda, Association of Commonwealth Universities, and the University of the West Indies signed a Memorandum of Understanding during a virtual ceremony. The partnership provides a framework for the establishment of the Center of Excellence for Oceanography and the Blue Economy at the UE5 Islands campus. UE5 Islands principal, Professor Denzel Williams says, there are numerous benefits that come from the center. Well, the Blue Economy is estimated to be a $2.5 trillion uh, economy. Now, we as a region cannot escape being a part of that. Uh, it's an important part of what we do to help to diversify the economies of the region. We're going to think about blue economy policy. We're going to think, think about what projects that can be developed in the blue economy. We're going to think about what are the things that you need to do in the sea to make sure that you can make a living from it. So all of those kinds of things, both theoretical and practical research. The Association of Commonwealth Universities will provide support for the effort. This Centre of Excellence will be able to benefit from many of the opportunities which the Association of Commonwealth Universities already delivers. From our work to supporting universities' adaption and resilience in the face of climate change, to ACU's dedicated climate change resilience network. Prime Minister Gaston Brown says that the blue economy, which is a sustainable use of marine resources for economic growth, can help Antigua build resilience. We need to diversify our country's economy as soon as possible. In fact, we'd have seen the effects of um, COVID-19, in which Antigua and Barbuda has been among the hardest hit globally uh, because of the prevalence or the dependence on um, tourism. So the creative industries and certainly um, climate studies to include um, oceanic studies, those are areas that we're concentrating on. Minister for the Blue Economy, Dean Jonas, played a crucial role in bringing the agreement to fruition. The centre is expected to be up and running by early next year and eventually provide degree programmes. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Thank you, Jessica. Now more information regarding the Blue Economy. The World Bank describes it as the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, improved livelihoods and jobs while preserving the health of the ocean ecosystem. Meanwhile, according to the Commonwealth, the blue economy is an emerging concept which encourages better stewardship of our ocean or blue resources. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown says the government is already looking towards the blue economy to possibly provide a unique product. One of the projects that we are pursuing presently is the establishment of a hotel property in which they will build a platform that will rest on the seabed. Uh, because obviously we are running out of um, beach space, uh, coastal space for um, the development of um, hotel properties. And that's one of the areas of technology that we are seeking to bring to the Caribbean for possible diversification. So even diversification of our tourism product. The country's Prime Minister says research coming from the UA5 Islands Center of Excellence for Oceanography and the Blue Economy could be a game changer for the Twin Island State. New products um, for global trade could be discovered as well. Um, most of our countries in the Caribbean, we are considered to be small island states. 
we can now literally transform into big Blue Island states uh, with resources to export, commodities to export to the world, and to become a more significant player in the global economy. The center is expected to provide evidence-based recommendations to the government on the blue economy once it becomes functional. In our conversations with Prime Minister Brown today, he will outline the estimates of expenditures and revenues when he delivers his budget presentation next to Thursday. While not saying much about what to expect, the head of government sought to allay concerns regarding at least one issue. No new taxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Antigua and Baby, like all countries around the world, has been hit hard by the economic fallout caused by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the dislocation has been most pronounced uh, in the country's main revenue-earning industry, tourism. We'll tell you more about the economic impact later on in our newscast, but for now another developing story. Antigua and Barbuda's COVID-19 case count has inched up by 1 to 190, but active cases remain at 27 since one other person who was infected has recovered. Now, the Health Ministry's latest dashboard shows the new imported case was confirmed from among 146 samples tested at the laboratory at the Mount St. John's Medical Center, the MSJMC. Of the country's 190 cases since March 13 last year. Imported cases now amount to 111 and the remaining 79 cases are non-imported. The ministry says an investigation has been launched into the new case and the contact tracing and testing are in progress. Meanwhile, the new, the new recovery takes that total to 157. Results are being awaited from a further 104 samples being tested. 581 people are now in self-quarantine. Now, there's confirmation this evening that starting next to Tuesday, January 26, all passengers traveling into the United States will be required to present results of a negative COVID-19 test in order to travel. It will be mandatory to have a COVID-19 test Ambassador no fuller Lionel than 72 Hurst hours before the flight departure date to the United States. Travelers must provide a written documentation of their laboratory test results paper or electronic copy to the airline at check-in. It's a development being monitored closely by tourism officials in this country and around the region, as it represents another challenge for the industry's recovery. Meanwhile, according to one influential Caribbean American Congresswoman, Yvette Clark, it's not the decision that the U.S. sees reversing soon. And so uh, I, while I would love to relax, uh, those uh, provisions that have been set forth by the CDC. Uh, I don't, uh, given my knowledge of what is happening in the scientific community, what is happening in the healthcare community, think that it would be a wise decision, uh, given where we are, to uh, relax those provisions uh, at this time. Clark, the daughter of Jamaican immigrants, was speaking today on a Zoom engagement facilitated by the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO. She says the U.S., which is preparing to welcome a new administration whose leadership appears more serious about battling the disease, needs to take every precaution. I think that uh, right now, unless we can prove that uh, we have all of the protective measures in place, to make sure that we are not circulating COVID-19 throughout the hemisphere. It's going to be very difficult. I'm just going to be honest. Avis is tracking how hotels are responding to the developments, and we will have details on the system they're seeking to put in place in an upcoming newscast. We're tracking this developing story as well because a disaster management official is allaying concerns that this country could be impacted by a tsunami if there were to be an explosive eruption of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' La Soufrière volcano. Director of the National Office of Disaster Services, NODS, Fillmore Mullen, addressed the issue on Antigua Barbuda today. The chance of that happening is, is almost nil. Um, the distance one, yes, and because the, the amount of material that will have to enter the sea to make an impact of that magnitude would be almost impossible. 
Uh, he warns, however, the Caribbean's geographical location places it at increased risk from disasters such as earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Tsunamis are often uh, the after effects of these disasters. The critical thing here is that you need to be able to save life and limb. And so we have done extensive work with the coastal communities and will continue to do that. As we've been reporting, an effusive reaction, or sorry, an effusive eruption began last month at the Lassifera volcano, where the lava flows steadily from the ground. A team of experts, including geologist Professor Richard Robertson from the University of the West Indies Seismic Research Center, continues to monitor the situation there in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Meanwhile, the NARD's director says there are plans in place to increase the tsunami preparedness of residents of the sister island of Barbuda. We will be, in short order, uh, traveling to Barbuda to work with our colleagues there and to bring a greater awareness to the community. We have done tsunami uh, training in Barbuda before. However, it will be more intense and, and sustained. Now, Mr. Mullen says Barbuda is very vulnerable to tsunamis due to its low-lying topography. The next best thing to elevation is distance. And so they will have to put some distance between themselves and the coastal um, shorelines. Here's the update. He tells ABS a tsunami drill will follow training activities. The area have been mapped and we've already identified on the map some of these. We are doing some final checks and those will be made public to the Barbudans in particular uh, when we start the next round of training. Tsunami drills have previously been conducted on Antigua in Bethesda and the surrounding communities as well as the communities near the city of St. John's. Of course, you'll follow these stories uh, very closely indeed, Andy. All right, indeed. Our top story was that uh, the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus will be at the center, the avant-garde of a push, a regional push on the blue economy uh, because a center of excellence is, is to be developed there. Uh, MOU was signed today for a center of excellence in the blue economy and oceanography as studies. Of course, we'll be getting much more information on that. Stay with us for more after the break. When we come back, here are more of the stories that we're tracking for you on ABS, the region's news leader. A man who's been on the run from the police has turned himself into the authorities this evening. We'll have that coming up. And we'll tell you that a woman was found dead at her home in Sweet. We will tell you what the police know at this point. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. Stay with us. Things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. It's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work. But if you really think about it, it's not really us doing the cleaning. At Total Import Supplies, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial-type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and the dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean Limited. Available only from Total Import Supplies. Meet Crutches. Crutches painted his house with Sherwin Williams paints. Unlike his neighbors, Crutches saves money by not having to repaint his house every year, which gives him more time for things like vacation. In fact, here he is now laid up on a beach in Honolulu with two hugs. Whoops, family. I, I meant family. While his neighbors are painting with who knows what. 
See what over 150 years of innovation can do for you. Bring your home to life with the very best paints, only at Sherwin-Williams. Thank you for staying with us. In this ABS News update, Ricardo Clark has turned himself into police custody. And this comes a day after police issued a wanted bulletin for the autist man in connection with allegations of breaking and larceny. Police say the man surrendered, surrendered sorry, to law enforcers uh, this afternoon. And uh, to other news now, no foul play is being suspected in the sudden death of a woman in suites this afternoon. Police say the 61-year-old woman was found dead by police. Law enforcers were called by neighbors who had become suspicious after seeing her door open. Now more indications now of the scale of the regional economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The World Bank says although the region is home to less than 10% of the global population, we're talking about Latin America and the Caribbean, it accounts for nearly 20% of confirmed cases. And high positive test rates in numerous countries suggest that cases are significantly underreported. The multilateral agency says the regional economy, that's Latin America and the Caribbean, contracted by an estimated 6.9% in 2020. Now this happened uh, as households and firms exhibited risk averse behavior and pandemic control measures restricted activity in the formal sector. The, banks in, the bank indicates in its uh, global economic prospects for January that the regional economy is projected to grow at a moderate pace of 3.7 percent this year. This is forecast with the expectation that pandemic mitigation measures are relaxed, COVID-19 vaccine rollouts gather pace, key commodity prices firm up, and external conditions improve. The World Bank says growth will then soften to 2.8% in 2022 as the boost from these factors wanes. Again, an update there from the World Bank a Global a Prospects Report for January talking about the impact on various areas of the world, and that was specifically in relation to Latin America and the Caribbean, talking about the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, Andy. All right, well, we'll be having reactions this evening from University of the West Indies Vice Chancellor, Sir Hilary Beckles, a day after he received the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Peace and Freedom Award. Indeed, Andy, and you would remember we carried this story last evening when Sir Hillary was conferred with the honor by the National Action Network founded by American civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton. It happened during a virtual ceremony. Individuals are honored, of course, for their contribution to justice and equality in their respective fields. Yes, indeed. It happened in, well, it happened in a virtual ceremony. Individuals are honored for their contribution to justice and equality in the respective fields. Sir Hillary is not only a distinguished historian and academic, but has been at the forefront of reparation efforts as chairman of the CARICOM Reparations Commission. Indeed, we'll have Sir Hillary joining us via Zoom a bit later on in our newscast as you react to that award he got yesterday, as well as his comments on the operations so far of the UE5 Islands campus. You don't want to miss that interview coming up via Zoom. Sir Hillary will be joining us from Jamaica, the home of UE's regional headquarters, and he'll be joining us in another 15 minutes or so. All right. but, but stick around. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news from overseas. One of the stories that we're tracking very closely can, uh, pertains to this one, an independent inquiry to be held into corruption claims in the British Virgin Islands. And internationally, the most powerful Republican on Capitol Hill, Mitch McConnell, delivers his most stinging rebuke of President Trump yet. <laughs> 